What is up YouTube, Coach Colton here to bring you physique development tools, skills, and opinions that hopefully you can use for yourself to make some gain. In this video, we're gonna cover five compounds you should never ever have in your stack as an enhanced bodybuilder. And before I even get started, this video is for entertainment purposes only. We're just theorizing here and hypothesizing. This isn't any advice, this isn't my recommendation. Go see a doctor if you want to use any of it. Is the comprehensive list of gear you shouldn't use. This isn't everything I would include, but this is enough to keep your attention span and at least provide a slight bit of education. The first we have here is trend. Very simply put, trend alone is not going to be required for a lot of people. Most people are never going to get to the point where trend's effects are even going to be beneficial. Now I've stated in the past that trend can be an awesome tool in the off season or in a competition prep, but this is for bodybuilders, not guys who are just recreationally using anabolic energetic steroids. And it's certainly not for regional guys who's never even placed in top three within their class. The the problem with Trembolone is that its progestogenic effects are extremely unselective. It can be a massive player in neurodegeneration, especially at a young age. The effects we see that happen in cattle with the remodeling of the brain, such as shrinking of the frontal cortex and the growth of the amygdala, is not something you want to encourage for someone who's 19, 20 through the ages of 26. I would venture to say that you probably want to stay far away from this stuff until you're competing at a pretty high level or at least placing within the top three in your regional show. The second compound I'm going to highly suggest against and probably just throw in the gutter is D-Ball. D-Ball is going to aromatize into different forms of estrogen that normal practices of estrogen management simply cannot handle. Thus, you are going to be on a gyno shit train. It also seems to manipulate the RAS system or the regenangiotensin aldosterone system very potently compared to other anabolic androgenic steroids. It's also very hepatic toxic. Because it's a 17 alpha alkylated steroid, which means that it features an alkyl group on its carbon chain, specifically a methyl or an ethyl group on its C17 position. Qu don't quote me on that. This makes the compound orally activated, but there's a problem with this. The, any 17 alpha alkylated compound is going to possess a high a selectivity for hepatotoxicity, meaning that it's going to be detrimental to your liver, which simultaneously limits its use. Whereas you could put something like a testosterone or a boldenone or a primobolin in play instead use it for a very long duration of time and see almost no features of hepatotoxicity. That combined with the excessive water retention with the excessive estrogen management techniques needed to use it, I just don't see it being an effective use of your time nor is it going to be wildly more beneficial than any other injectable compound. Methyl Tren. Boy, this one is a bad guy. <laughs> this agent is a derivative of Trenbolone, but it's not Trenbolone. You see, this has been 17 alpha alkylated just like D-Ball. But this creation of a molecule has created such a strong molecule. Its potency has been measured to be somewhere around 100 to 300 times the amount of testosterone in its affinity for the androgen receptor. It was actually used in treatment for advanced breast cancer in women during the 1960s to 1970s, during which in this time they found that it was extremely toxic to human organs. Even at the lowest doses, it produced extreme hepatotoxicity for all women in clinical trials. Thus its development was suddenly stopped within a very brief moment of time. There's even some cases online, which I don't know the validity of these, these are more forum cases, like bro forum cases, that it has put some people with acute usage of this compound into immediate hepatic failure. So I don't recommend it. It's not going to be this crazy magical compound. If anything, it's only going to cause more havoc to your health and total body system. Fourth, DHB. Some might call it one testosterone. Dihydroboldenone is what it stands for. This compound is a mixed one for me. I've used it in the past, but to be honest, I never really loved it that much. It's a five alpha reduced form of boldenone, so equipoise. And in theory, this would make it a pretty selective androgen because it's going to be much more broken down in a sense and radically improved for its androgen receptivity or efficacy. But the problem here lies in, again, it's a patotoxicity. Now, this compound isn't 17 alpha alkylated like the others mentioned before, but it has been shown in clinical trials when it was developed to increase liver weight, which is very, very bad. You see, we don't want our organs to be growing more than necessary, and unfortunately, a lot of bodybuilders are heading down this path without knowing. Also, from a practical sense, I don't know if you've ever used DHB. I certainly have because I like to experiment, but I stopped very quickly because the pain of the injection is not worth it. It is literally not practical to use 
any feasible dose of DHB. I personally never enjoyed using it. I never got results that have gotten from a high dose of testosterone from DHB. And quite frankly, I just don't think it's worth the extra money you're going to spend. I would rather see someone just buy more Mastron, Primable, and testosterone. And then there is the whole underground lab thing in there too. Like, is the lab creating DHB really giving you DHB in the first place? And why does it sting so bad? Is it because of the lab's brewing capacity or is it because DHB just hurts so bad? <laughs> There's not really a good clear evidence there. And then lastly, my favorite of all, SARMs. <laughs> I'm not talking about MK677 because that's not a SARM. I'm not talking about other uh, various secretagogues or peptides. I am talking about androgen modulators exclusively. Things like RAD140, LGD, those class of compounds. Here's the issue that I see mostly with SARM, and it just comes from, again, a practical standpoint. One, they're more expensive than just normal anabolic androgenic steroids. Like, why not just venture to the thing that less is less expensive? And also studied for several decades and decades and decades. Two compounds that fact yes they're a relatively new drug coming out in around 2000 but in all the human trials that have been done with them in some and most animal trials it's failed the compounds have been determined to not be selective they've been determined to not be as effective as already existing anabolic steroids like anovar and thus they're shut down the other caveat to be added to that is rarely the chemical you're buying from that online peptide website is going to be the chemical that they're displaying I've seen so many cases of guys talking about gyno development with RAD140 or LGD. Well, I've got news for you. This is not LGD. It's not RAD140. You're probably taking D-Ball. Because guess what? D-Ball is going to be much cheaper to get your hands on for an underground lab than it is to get a SARM. And when we compare it to effective doses of various anabolic androgenic steroids, something like a Primabolin or a Nandrolone, its efficaciousness for actual skeletal muscle growth in comparison to the side effect related burdens that people have, it's not comparable even in the first place. It's it's not worth more expensive. It gives you much more side effect profile. And quite frankly, the anabolic energy steroids work very well. And they've also been studied. We know the deleterious effects and outcomes that you get from using them for long periods of time. Whereas SARMs, we have virtually no clue of what they're going to do to you long term. So that's my opinion, you guys. Five compounds I would remove from any form of stack you produce in the future. Keep safe, use the good stuff. Just basics are the best, right? Like stick with the most basic compound, the boring stuff, maybe, I don't know. I don't think it's boring because it gets me fucking huge. That's really what I care about. So all I'm considering is let's just see, hmm, what do I have in the off season? Testosterone, a bit of nandrolone. I like a little bit of equipoise personally, and maybe some Mastron or Primobolin to control estrogen. Then on top of that, in my preparation phases, I'm going to leverage a bit of Trembolone, something like a 50 milligram to 70 milligram weekly dosage, a lot less than most people are using out there, a moderate amount of testosterone, and a decent bit of DHT just to create a little bit of mineral corticoid balance so I look a little bit drier during that preparation. And that's really what I'm gonna use, guys. Like, it's that easy. Don't get too uh, excited about new and novel compounds. Don't pontificate on different chemicals and peptides coming out. It's never worth it. It's not worth it. Use what we've had for decades and decades and decades, and that has been clinically researched for a very long time. Let guys like Vigorous Steve or guys who just like to experiment with their bodies do the experiments. We'll follow up with the data once we have it and then apply it once we know that hey this compound is relatively safe for human use that's how i see it i'm gonna experiment with things like i said i experimented with dhb i experiment with different peptides from our hrt clinic rise hrt if you need hormone replacement therapy for a dirt cheap cost or any peptide therapy without blood work needed go down to the description below and hit up with rise hrt it'll get you configured but i like to test the products we get there before we deploy them to the public and or sell them make sure that hey this thing is actually marketed as it says and it works effectively. That's how I experiment, but I do it in very short term and acute windows, and that's really all I'm gonna do. I'm never gonna use something that's radical or ridiculous or unproposed to any sort of form of benefit. I'm just going to do my thing, stay in my lane, blah, 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 blah. Use the basics, don't get overwhelmed. Stay very, very, very singular mindset. Don't get uh, this pontification of all the different peptides and formulas and wows uh, out there. Just stay very basic. That's all I gotta say. Hope you have a beautiful day. If you did like this video, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, let me know what you thought, let me know what compounds I should have included in this list, or let me know what compounds you think are essential in a stack down below in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Deuces.